Loving Father of mercy and compassion, may your spirit lead in this presentation we plead with you in Jesus' name. Amen. Greetings, brothers and sisters, colleagues and friends all over the world. This is the Herald Report. My name is Kudza, your host. I'm so glad to be with you. I'm so glad that God has allowed us once more to communicate wherever you are. May the Lord truly bless you. To those who are joining us for the first time, may the Lord truly bless you. To those who have been with us before, may the Lord continue to bless you. And today we just want to talk about who are the true Israelites, the real Jews, children of promise. As you know, last week we covered the war between Israel and Hamas, and we are still progressing uh, with this war. The question is, who is the real custodians of the area? There is a fight for the Gaza Strip. That, the, does the area belong to Israel as they claim? Does the area belong to Israel as they claim? Who are the real Israelites in the Bible? Do we still have Israel as a nation today? Who are the real Israel of God according to the Bible? That's the question that we want to wrestle with today. And I pray uh, that God will guide us. And I want to promise you this presentation is very important because it will help us to understand some serious questions. I've listened uh, after following last week's presentation, I was uh, called by a few people and they actually asked me about the real Israelites. They asked me about the Jews, the real Jews and the fake Jews. And indeed, uh, I was so glad uh, to hear so many uh, uh, quite a lot of uh, things which were said regarding this presentation. Uh, I want to uh, progress from there today and I've got some understanding which I believe this will be very useful for us to understand this biblically and I can only focus much on the Bible because I'm a preacher and I just want to bring the biblical perspective of who the Israelites are, whether we still have a nation called Israel today or not. So I promise you this will be a very wonderful presentation so please stay tuned as we go through it the bible says in the book of genesis chapter 18 seeing that abraham genesis chapter 18 verse 18 seeing that abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him for i know him that he will command his children and his household after him and they shall keep the way the way of the lord to do justice and uh, judgment that the lord may bring upon Abraham that which he has spoken of him. So now Abraham is being promised that he's going to be a great nation. Abraham will be very big. Abraham is a special person. For he will command his household to keep the statutes of God, to keep the judgments of God, to obey God. But now the question is, how do you become the child of this great man called Abraham? I want to take you to reflect in Christ, page 193. Of Abraham, it is written that he was called the friend of God. That's James chapter 2, 23. The father of all them that believe. That uh, Romans chapter 4, verse 11. The testimony of, the, uh, of God concerning this faithful patriarch is Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. So we are talking of uh, this being called Abraham. He was obedient. He was faithful. He was called the child of God. He was called the friend of God. How do I become a friend of God? Or rather, how become, uh, do I become a descendant of Abraham? Because if I have, I'm a descendant of Abraham, then I'll also be an inheritor of the inheritance of Abraham was told that it was a high honor to which Abraham was called that of being the father of the people who for centuries were the guardians and pre preservers of the truth of God. So now the children of God are guardians and the preservers of truth. In fact, the descendants of Abraham are guardians and preservers of truth. So what constitutes someone to be called a child of Abraham or someone to be called the descendant of Abraham is their guardian, their, their preservation of the truth. He says, of that people through whom all the nations of the earth should be blessed in the advent of the promised Messiah. So basically now we're told that in the advent of the promised Messiah, he was coming through the lineage of Abraham. He was coming through as a descendant of Abraham. So Abraham was 
living in preparation for the coming Messiah and the guardians and the preservers of truth, preservers of truth are called the sons of the, uh, Abraham. But now the question is what exactly was the purpose? The purpose of blessing was in preparation for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ who was to be a blessing to the whole world. But now let me take you to the book of Genesis chapter 26 to the Bible says, and the Lord appeared unto him and said, go now. Go not down into Egypt, dwell in the land which I shall tell thee of. This is actually uh, re referring to Jacob. So join in the land and I will be with thee and will bless thee for unto thee and unto thy seed I will give all the countries and I will perform the oath which I swear unto Abraham thy father. In fact, this was actually concerning Isaac. So God is saying, I'm going to bless you and I'll give you this land which I promised thy father. Verse 4, and I will make thy seed to multiply as the stars of heaven and will give unto thy seed all these countries and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed because that Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my statue, my commandments and my statue and my laws. So we see God is promising to give to the descendants of Abraham the land. He's promised to, to give, promising to give to the descendants of Abraham great promises. But now, the descendants of Abraham, we can safely say that this seemed to be referring to Isaac because God was talking to Isaac. But the question is, are these the descendants of Abraham by faith, the sons of Isaac? The blessings was because of the, 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 the children of Isaac received blessings simply because of their allegiance to the commandments of God, of their obedience to the commandments of God. Therefore, they, they qualified to receive the blessing which was given to Abraham. But now look at Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 6. For thou art a holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God has chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. So now we see another term. They are very special. Above all the people that resides on the earth. Now what makes them to be special? The Lord did not set his love upon you nor chosen you because you were more in number than any people. For ye were the fewest of all the people. But now why then did God choose them? But because the Lord loved you and because he would keep the, because he would keep the oath which he had sworn unto your fathers, yet the Lord brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you out of the house of bond, bondmen from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. So basically the blessings was because of the oath which was made to Abraham. Abraham being a representative of the true faith. So the Israelites, the descendants of Isaac, they were loved. They were given responsibility to represent the God of heaven. So the blessings they received, it was simply because of Abraham number one it was a responsibility to reflect the praises of him that called them out of darkness into the marvelous light now prophets and kings say in page 368 the all embracing terms of this covenant were familiar to Abraham's children and to his children's children it was in order that the Israelites might be a blessing to the nations to ensure that the Israelites may be a blessing to the nations. God blessed them with resources. God blessed them and gave them oracles. God gave them and gave them his statues so that they can be a blessing to the nation and that God's name might be known throughout all the earth. That's Exodus chapter 9, 16, that they, may be deli that they were delivered from Egypt bondage. If obedient to his requirements, they were to be placed far in advance of other people in wisdom and understanding. But this supremacy was to be reached and maintained only in order that through them, the purpose of God for all nations of the earth might be fulfilled. And what exactly was the purpose of God? That all nations may know the true God. So now God made the descendants of Abraham evangelist 
to bring his character or to bring his love or to let to make his 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 name known to the heathens nation Christ's object lesson says God desired to make of his people Israel a praise and a glory every spiritual advantage was given them God withheld from them nothing favorable to the formation of character that would make them representative of himself that's Christ's object lesson page 288 so there was a great favor extended to the Israelites and this favor was simply that they could make the word of God known. There was nothing special in them except that God had his servant called Abraham. And God made an oath to Abraham that in your children, my name will be blessed and I will bless them and bless them indeed. Now we are told their obedience to the law of God would make them the marvels of prosperity before the nations of the world. He who would give them wisdom and skill in all cunning work would continue to be their teacher and would enable them, enable and elevate them through obedience to his law. So basically their prosperity or their posterity was dependent upon their obedience. God will bless them because of their obedience. God will bless them because of their adherence to the children, to the statutes of God. It says, if obedient, they would be preserved from the diseases that afflicted other nations and would be blessed with vigor of intellect. The glory of God, his majesty and power were to be revealed in all their prosperity. They were to be a kingdom of priests and uh, princes. God furnished them with every facility for becoming the greatest nation on the earth. So they were to be the greatest nation on the earth. They were to be blessed greatly and tremendously. And uh, the whole world will look at Israel for guidance, will look at Israel for what it means to worship God. But what happened to their responsibility? What happened if they were to fail on the responsibility? Can they still remain a special people when they objected to the commandments of God? Can they still enjoy the protection and blessings of God? Brothers and sisters, it is said to say that uh, the descendants of Abraham, biological descendants of Abraham, they failed on their responsibility. Their failure was very gradual until they were totally rejected by God. So today we don't have the biological children of Abraham as representatives of God on earth. No, the Bible does not teach that. In fact, let's go through it by step by step. Isaiah chapter 5 from verse 1, the Bible says, Now will I sing to my beloved a song of my beloved touching his vineyard. My well-beloved has a vineyard in a very faithful hill. He had and he fenced it and gathered out the stones thereof and planted it with the choicest vine and built a tower in the midst of it and also made a wine press therein. And he looked that he should bring forth it, that it should bring forth grapes and it brought forth wild grapes. So there was a big investment done by the vine owner. He dressed it. He removed stones. He watered. He did all that he could do to ensure that he would get the best fruit. But lo and behold, he got wild grapes. Now look at verse 3. And now all inhabitants of Jerusalem and men of Judah, judge, I pray you, betwixt me and my vineyard, what could have been done more to my vineyard than I have not done to it? That I have not done to it. Wherefore, when I looked that it should bring forth grapes, brought it forth wild grapes. Everything was done. All the blessings, this was actually referring to Israel. All the blessings that could be given to Israel as a nation was given. But in return, they despised the giver of the blessing. And they valued the blessing. And they thought themselves to be special. When in actual fact, their speciality was in elevating the name of the Lord. Now, Jeremiah chapter 9, verse 13 says, 
And the Lord said, Because they have forsaken my law, which I have set before them, and have not obeyed my voice, neither walk therein, but have walked after the imagination of their own heart, and after Balaam, which their fathers taught them. So they walked according to their religion of the heathens. They walked in idols. They worship idols and they forsook the God of heaven. Now the question is, when they have forsaken the God of heaven, do they still have the favor of God? Now look at verse 15. Therefore thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, behold, I will feed them even these people with wormwood and give them water of gall to drink. I will scatter them also among the heathens whom they ne neither they nor their fathers have known and I will send a sword after them till I have consumed them. So God promised that the Israelites will be scattered among the nations. There's something very interesting about what Jeremiah is saying. When they have been scattered among the nations, will they be rebuilt again? Will the nation of Israel exist again? We know that after the Babylonian exile, God tried to help the Israelites to repent. John had this to say because the Israelites could not repent and did not repent. And the Israelites, whether they will repent or not, this is something probably in the future. But however, that which is very important is that the Israelites did not repent until they were overthrown as a nation. Now look at this. Uh, Matthew chapter 3 verse 7, Then said he to the multitude that came forth to be baptized of him, O generation of vipers, who has warned you to flee from the world to come. So now John is saying, you are a generation of vipers. You are not sons of God. You are sons of the devil. You are of your father the devil. That's John chapter 8 verse 44. Verse 3, Bring forth therefore fruits worthy of repentance, and begin not to say to yourself, We have Abraham to our father. For I say unto you that God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. So John is just saying that you claim to be children of Abraham, but you are not. You claim to belong to God, but you are not. Now look at verse 9. And now also the ex is laid unto the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, which bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. No, the question is, when a tree is cut from the root, can that tree regenerate again? Can that tree grow again? When you have uprooted a tree, can there be anything that remained? Now, Jesus also warned of the lost position of the children of Israel because of their failure. Now look at John chapter 8, 39. Jesus answered and said unto them, Abraham is a... They answered and said unto him, these are the Pharisees talking to Jesus. They answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. Jesus said unto them, if you were Abraham's children, you would not do the works of, you would do the works of Abraham. But now you seek to kill me, a man that has told you the truth, which I have heard of God. This did not Abraham. What did Abraham to do? do? Abraham was dis, uh, obedient. He understood the word of God. He followed the way of Jesus Christ. He followed the ways of Jesus Christ. But these so-called descendants of Jesus Christ, they were fighting, the descendants of Abraham, I meant to say, they were fighting Jesus Christ. In other words, they were proving that they are actually not the descendants of Abraham, the, the, the real descendants of Abraham. Now look at verse 41. You do the deeds of your father. Then say they to him, we be not born of fornication. We have our one father, even God. Jesus said unto them, If God were your father, you would love, you would love me, for I proceeded forth and come uh, from God. Neither come I of myself, but he sent me. Why do ye not understand my speech, even because you cannot hear my word? Now, verse 44, which is very painful, he says, You are of your father, the devil. And the last of your father you will do. So now the rejection of the commandments of God forfeited the nation of Israel. Because of their objection to the commandments of God, they become the children of the devil. So now the question is, are they now Israelites? They cannot qualify to be called Israelites anymore. 
as long as they disobey because Israel is the name of victory. Those who have been victorious, who are living a life of victory over every sin. But when you reject the law of God, when you reject the name of God, then you don't qualify to be called an Israelite in the Bible. Let me prove it further. Now, their father is a devil. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a, a lie, he speaketh of his own for he is a liar and a father of it. So in other words, Jesus is saying, you Israelites, you behave like your, your father the devil, you are murderers. You behave like your father the devil is a liar for you are liars. In you there is no trace of the God of heaven. Therefore, by default, you don't qualify. Now look at uh, this, uh, this uh, uh, quotation now. The Jews had deceived themselves by misinterpreting the words of the Lord through his prophets. Of his eternal favor to his people Israel. They misapplied the words of Jeremiah and depended for salvation upon their being called the children of Abraham. If they had been indeed worthy of the name Abraham's children, they would have followed the righteous example of their father Abraham and would have done the works of Abraham. So in other words, they are not worthy or they were not worthy to be called the descendants of Abraham because they were not doing the deeds of Abraham. They were no longer in favor with God, even though they could be biological descendants of Abraham, but because they rejected the commandments of God, they rejected the religion of Abraham, they are no longer Israelites. But they are now of their father, the devil. So after the return of exile from Babylon, God tried to reach the children of, Abra the children of Israel. God did everything that he could do. But at last, Jesus said in Matthew chapter 23, 37, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets and stoneth them, which are sent unto thee, how often would I have gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathereth her chicks under her wings, and you will not behold your house is left unto you desolate. For I say unto you, you shall not see me henceforth, till you say, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Who was blessed? Jesus, who came in the name of the Lord. For they rejected him. And Jesus said, Listen, your house is left unto you desolate. This was the end of Israel as a nation, according to the Bible. But there is something very interesting. Because on that very time, they were not destroyed. 70, they were still... Yeah, there were still years to go until the destruction of Jerusalem in AD, th AD 70. But in AD 34, Stephen said to them in Acts chapter 7, verse 51, Ye stiff necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears, ye do always resist the Holy Ghost as your fathers did, so do ye. Which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted and they have slain them which showed before of the coming of the just one? of whom you have been, not the betrayers and murderers, who have received, sorry, of whom you have been now the betrayers and murderers, who have received the law by the disposition of angels and have not kept it. So they received the disposition of the law by angels. They have not kept it. They had become murderers and adulterers. And that was not what Abraham was. Therefore, they disqualified themselves to be the real Israelites. Therefore, they were no longer the real Israelites. But now, Great Conference, page 21 says, Prophets had wept over the apostates of Israel and the terrible desolation by which their sins were visited. Jeremiah wished that his eyes were a fountain of waters, that he might weep day and night for the slain of the daughter of his people, for the children, for the Lord flock that was carried away captive. That's Jeremiah chapter 9, 1 and 13, 17. What then was the grief of, his, of him whose prophetic glance took in for years but ages? Not, for ye not years but ages. He beheld the destroying angel with sword uplifted against the city which had so long been Jehovah's dwelling place. Why would Jehovah destroy his city? Because the glory of God departed. Therefore the Roman army came to destroy 
Israel, O Jerusalem, once and for all, and to take all those that remained in exile, and they were mingled and mixed with the nation. And this was the end of Israel as we know it according to the Bible. Look at this. From the ridge of Olivet, the very spot afterward occupied by Titus and his army, he looked across the valley upon the sacred courts and uh, porches and with the tear with the with tear dimmed eye he saw in awful perspective the walls surrounded by the alien host he heard the tread of armies marshalling for war he heard the voice of mothers and children crying for bread in besieged city he saw he saw her her holy and beautiful house her palaces and towers given to the flames and where once and where once they stood where once they stood only a heap of smoldering ruins that's gc page 21 and that was the end of the city and what was the reason why the greatest sin of the jews was their rejection of christ that's great converse chapter 20 verse 2 uh, chapter uh, page 22 because of their rejection of christ Jerusalem was destroyed. Millions of Jews were killed. The remaining alive were taken into exile and they dispersed among the nations. And there was nothing left anymore. The destruction of Jerusalem marked the end of the Jewish nation. Since then, the Jews are scattered all over the world. We don't see any rebuilding of Jerusalem in the Bible. We don't see any rebuilding of the nation of Israel in the Bible. Their rejection of Christ ended their favor with God, and that was the end of it. So there is no nation in the Bible called Israel with the Israelites, the children of promise. There is no, the existence of Israel as a nation today is political, is a many made, but not biblical. So we talk about the 19, uh, since uh, 1949, after the Second World War, there was uh, uh, the formation of the nation of Israel. But now, something very interesting, which was raised by others, are they real Jews or fake Jews? Indeed, we don't see them in the Bible as real Jews. In the Bible, we are told who are the real Israelites are. The Bible says in the book of Galatians chapter 3, verse 29, And if you be Christ, then you are Abraham's seed. Hear us according to the promise. So the hearers according to the promise are the real Jews. The people that believe in the word of God, the people that believe the word of God. Now, Romans chapter 3, verse 20, 20, 28, the Bible says, For he is not a Jew which is one outwardly, Neither is he is that circumcision which is outward in the flesh, but he is a Jew which is one inwardly, and circumcision is that of the heart in the spirit and not in the letter, whose praise is not of men but of God. So are they real Jews in Palestine? There may be some Jews there, but however, it's not a nation of Jews anymore. Because the nation of Jews is all over the world which believe in the commandments of God and keep the word of God. UL page 8 paragraph 4 says the Jewish people might have repented if they would have if they would but they were clothed with the garment of their own self-righteousness. They claimed to be the descendants of Abraham and looked upon every promise made to Israel as theirs but the Israel of God are those who are converted. So now there is an Israel which is of God, but there is an Israel which is not of God. The Israel in Palestine today, the nation of Israel, there is no resemblance of God in that. What do I mean? Let me qualify it. Because what makes Israel to be Israel is their obedience to God. So when Jesus Christ was rejected, then the nation ceased to be Israel. Israel is a character. That's why the Bible says refers to the 144 as the Israel of God. So the Israel of God 
is not something that is visible. The Israel of God is a character, and these are the followers of Christ who are all over the world. It says, but the Israel of God are those who are converted, not those who are the lineal descendants of Abraham. What advantage then has a Jew, or what profit is there of circumcision? Much every way, chiefly because that unto them were committed the oracles of God. But now, when they received the oracles of God, what happened? They did not follow the oracles of God. The standard of salvation, brothers and sisters, or oh, we don't inherit salvation biologically. Salvation is a gift that we receive because we've been converted. And the nation of Israel, their rejection of conversion led to their nation totally and completely being destroyed. Now look at chapter 3, verse 29. He is, is he the God of the Jews only? Is he not also of the Gentiles? Yes, of the Gentiles also. Seeing it is one God which shall justify the circumcision by faith and the uncircumcision through faith. Therefore, God is going to, there is now no preference. There is now no favor anymore. The favor is only on those who have accepted the standard of Jesus, who accepted the standard of God. Therefore, who then are the real Jews? Or who are the people in Israel today? Brothers and sisters, let me actually bring this to you. The Bible is very clear of who the Jews are today and where they are. Look at what it says, James chapter 1, verse 1. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad, greeting. So the 12 tribes of Israel are scattered abroad. And these 12 tribes, they are Christians. We have accepted Jesus Christ. When we have accepted Jesus Christ, we become the real Israelites. This James is addressing, in fact, let me go to the Bible commentary. It says, James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad, greetings. The content of James' letter is clearly addressed to Christians, and yet he plainly refers to them as spiritual Jews from the 12 spiritual tribes. So these are the spiritual Jews. The spiritual Jews, we have accepted Jesus Christ. They are now descendants of Abraham. We're going to deal with this in our next presentation as we'll be dealing with the 144,000. So please don't miss our next presentation. Now look at uh, Romans chapter 11 verse 5. Even so then, at this present time also, there is a remnant according to the election of grace. This remnant according to the election of grace, they are the descendants of Abraham. But now, how did they become the descendants of Abraham? They have become descendants of Abraham by accepting the gospel or by accepting the commandments of God, by accepting the character of Jesus Christ. Then they have become the royal priesthood, the holy nation, peculiar people who have been called forth to bring the praises of him that has called them out of darkness into his marvelous light. That's uh, 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 9. So therefore, brothers and sisters, what constitute Israel is their, what constitute Israel to be a nation, biblically, is their understanding and appreciation of the commandments of God. Now let's look at signs of the times 1881, June 9. God would have his people present. Uh, God would have his people present a marked contrast in character and conduct to the unbelieving world. So if ever there is a nation today which is actually called a nation of the world, then they should have a contrast to the world. They should be obedient to the commandments of God. They should be believing people, keeping the Sabbath of God, observing, accepting the teachings of Jesus Christ, accepting the righteousness of Jesus Christ as their only righteousness, accepting the atoning blood of Jesus Christ. But the question, do we have such a nation in Palestine today? The Bible says no, but we have got a people all over the world which are called the remnant of God. We have accepted the teachings of Jesus Christ. We have accepted the character of Jesus Christ. Says we, we are to be a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people to show forth the praises of him who has called us 
out of darkness into marvelous light only by con constant watchfulness and earnest prayer mingled with faith can we preserve our peculiarity. Holy character as sons and daughters of God. How could that be done? Only by taking heed to the commandments of God. So brothers and sisters, let me submit this to you. The nation of Israel are those who keep the commandments of God, who have accepted the atoning blood of Jesus Christ. And this nation of Israel is scattered all over the world. But do we have a nation called Israel today? The nation called Israel today is there, but does not represent the name Israel according to the Bible. Now the question is, where are this nation of Israel? This is our next presentation as we deal with the 144. Please, uh, Follow us uh, clearly and let's join us in the next presentation as we'll be looking at the real nation of Israel, the 144,000. Shall we pray? Thank you, Father. Blessed be your name. Be merciful to us, O Lord, and give us wisdom to accept the character of Abraham, to accept the character of Jesus Christ, that we may be the real Israelites waiting for your soon return. Bless us, we plead with you, O Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Until then, brothers and sisters, may the Lord truly bless you. I look forward to see you in the next edition as we'll be looking at the 144,000. Who are the real 144,000? And who are those 12 tribes of Israel in the book of Revelation chapter 7? And who are those uh, 144,000 in Revelation chapter 14? I look forward to see you in the next edition. Don't forget to share the presentation. Don't forget to subscribe. Until then, continue to be blessed in the Lord.